Adieu to Bali Shani, where I was bred and born. You where I may I think of you as sure as night and morn. The kindly spot, the friendly town where everyone is known. And not a face in all the place, but partly seems my own. There's not a house or window, there's not a tree or hill, but east or west and foreign lands, I recollect them still. I leave my warm heart with you, though my back I'm forced to turn. Adieu to Bali Shani and the winding banks of earth. You're very, very welcome to Ballyshannon, Ireland's oldest town, and we're delighted that you can join us for our Heritage Week 2021 virtual walking tour. My name is Barry, and I'm a founder member of the Ballyshannon Regeneration Group. And Olive and I would like to take you uh, on a, a little journey and share with you uh, some of the wealth of heritage and stories of one particular part of Ballyshannon. Today, we're going to focus on the Mall area, and the reason for this is that we got really good news recently and thanks to the Heritage Council and Donegal County Council in partnership with the Ballyshannon Regeneration Group, we've been successful in obtaining funding under the Historic Towns Initiative 2021. We are working with property owners on the Mall who, who will part fund this initiative and the grant will allow for the protection and conservation of some of our rich built heritage um, you will see significant improvements in the coming months. Uh, so now Olive and I will take you on a saunter down the Mall from the town centre to the Mall Quay and we'll see what we discover along the way, Olive. Oh, indeed, Barry. Ballyshannon, or as my father always called it, Ballyshanny, is really a very beautiful town and the Mall, one of its nicest areas. Although it was known in the past as Fish Lane and in 1800 as Park Lane, because the Mall was a popular name for all fashionable walking routes in the, the 18th century. But the Mall here in Ballyshannon was once the bustling commercial centre of the street of the town. And look at here we have McIntyre's Saloon Bar. And this is a really important building as it retains all its early form and architectural features. And look at you can see there the lovely wavy original glass. And we know that the poet William Allingham's father, uncles and aunts were all born here. And in 1812, his grandfather left this building to his eldest son, Edward. So as we move down here, we'll see what was White's supermarket on the right hand side. And um, there's a man down here, Michael McGlone. We're going to call into Michael and ask him because he's a long time resident on the Mall. We'll talk to him about yeah, these buildings across from lovely. his house. Oh, well, we're, you're, you're, you're always welcome we're, here. We're, we're getting a few stories together about the about the Mall and, uh, right. and, and the, the past. You know, but you've been living a good while on the Mall, haven't you? Uh, we're here since uh, 1964. Right. We came to this house here. Yeah. 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 It's not, it's, yet, it? it's not indeed. There's big changes on the mall yeah. since we came, of course. Of course, there is. Yeah. Our family have grown up and they're gone away, yeah. and we're, yeah. it was a lovely place to live just, and very good neighbours. And yeah. I was just uh, talking to Olive about how, how busy it used to be, and it was a very thriving place with the port and the shops and all. But just will you tell us a wee bit about across the street from you here? You know, the, the buildings that are over, over here? Uh, well, that was White's, of course, across the street, right from there. That was Miss Cannon's there, where Gallers is now. There was a wee shop there too. Yeah. She sold paraffin oil and stuff like that, you know. Right. But White's was a big establishment, it was right up S to the corner. Supermarket? Not in my days, no. Oh. No, in, in the later years he made a supermarket, but when I worked in it, it was a counter service. Okay. And uh, there's a lot of changes since. It was all one unit, from right up to the green building there. Yeah. Now that was a, a store. That was called the meal store. Yeah. And upstairs then, when later, when James got into turkeys, he kept the turkeys upstairs. 
up in that building there. Yes. There was a big door. You can see the track of it in the, between the two windows yet. Oh, yeah, and it's, it's, it's blocked up. It's blocked up, but the, that was where the turkeys were reared in the beginning. Yeah, and that was James White. That was James White, hey. Yes. James White was a yeah. great uh, an entrepreneur. An uh, he was a famous the, great the, man. The, these turkeys were live turkeys. Well, of course oh. they were, live turkeys. <laughs> live turkeys, surely. Well, what about the health and safety? Oh. Oh, that's a great story. And it's great to have somebody who remembers all of that, Barry. Mm. And look, at here we have this lovely terrace of three houses. And we know that the Allingham family moved between McIntyre's and these houses during their lifetime. And the, the poet William was born here in 1824. Well, as well as William Allingham growing up in this house, there was a little cat reared in this house too. And this little kitten was a stowaway on a ship from Norway. So, not surprisingly, the Allinghams called it Norway. And it turned out to be a cat with very expensive tastes. And Eva's going to tell us about that now. A favourite cat, and one in truth deserving to be so, who had been brought in early youth from Norway's land of snow. By turns a pet with all the house, well pampered you may guess, preferring far before a mouse, a lobster's tasty mess. So we can look across to the Ballyshannon Bakery site now, on the right hand side, and it's quite derelict at the moment, but we can just imagine the amount of activity that there was here with all the bakers hard at work, and the bakery shop there selling all the lovely, all the lovely baked goods and the, the, the nice smells that were wafting through the air. So uh, on this side of the street, uh, we're looking at McCusker's house, built in 1860, and there's a beautiful doorway you'd see here, and nice craftsmanship throughout the house. Condon's house was built in the early 1800s, and really is one of the finest private houses in Ballyshannon. It was the home of Edward Kelly, who was the last MP in, to sit in Westminster, the last MP from Donegal to sit in Westminster in 1918. And after that, it, it came into the family, the Condons, so it's, it's known locally here as Condon's House now. But sadly, it's in a very derelict state now for a number of decades. And thankfully, it is one of the buildings that's going to be subject to uh, conservation and protection as part of the Historic Towns Initiative this year. And in the coming months, we look forward to seeing some improvements on this building. And it's great to have that wedding photo of the wedding party on yes. the steps, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And when we look at those ladies and their finery, we think back to that very witty 17th century ditty, which was written by the ladies of Ballyshannon in protest against the dirt and the mire they had to walk <laughs> through with their fine dresses. Yeah. So Aideen's going to read that for us, and thankfully the young ladies of today don't have that problem. Ye Ballyshannon gentlemen who walk about in boots, you little think how ill the wet and dirt a lady suits. Mark well our tales of woe, and will your heart appall, as we sweep ankle deep through the mud upon our mall, in rain, in light, and splendour, the glorious sun goes down. We cannot be beholding him and beholding to our gown. In vain do gold and crimson clouds adorn the western sky, for the spots and black dots on our dress are all we spy. Then ye Ballyshannon gentlemen, unto our walks attend, to strew our path with gravel, brought from the pebbly strand. Oh, let your carts and horses, your money and goodwill, be at hand, at command, for to serve the ladies still. And I can just imagine those fine ladies across the road here in Lea Fall. It was built in 1815. It's got really beautiful late Georgian proportions, and it's still got all of its original architectural character. If we hopscotch over Mulligans for a moment, we'll find uh, where the Presbyterian Church was built in 1840. And it's another fantastic architectural um, delight with a, with a wonderful rose window in it. And you'll see the Presbyterian School uh, next, just next to it within the grounds, which has been recently restored as a private residence. And let's go back now to Mulligans. So Mulligans was built about 1910. And it's a fine Edwardian-style building. It was built by A.G. Swan, who was the Harbour Commissioner for Ballyshannon. 
and in 1940, his son, Tom Swan, ran a fish processing operation from these big warehouses here. When we look across the river here, we can see Miles's, which was a huge operation right from early in the 19th century. And Miles had a very extensive timber trade with Canada, Norway and Sweden. They had a sawmill making boxes for the coastal fisheries and that whole fleet of horses, uh, all that but the, the ladies had to step through, mm -hmm. drawing goods and fish that had been iced in the ice house to Derry for onward transportation. And of course, as well as Miles's, the other very important family were the Jennings family. They came to Ballyshannon in the early 17th century and they were the principal family engaged in the export of iron. So the iron ore was transported to the Mal Quay here from Garris and Petty, Gustrin Orler and the Leitrim Mountains. And the, apparently the Jennings family grew really wealthy. And what Anthony Begley tells us that, is that in the 18th century, Francis Jennings went over to Sweden where he became even more wealthy. So the iron industry in Ballyshannon in the 17th century played a major role in the development of the wealth of the Swedish economy in the 18th century. Wow. We're really lucky that we have the diaries of William Allingham, who brings both his home and life here in the Mall in the early part of the 20th century completely to life. He describes how he as a little boy was sitting up on the branches of a big fig tree looking down at all of the comings and goings and with his father owning five or six ships and importing timber, slate, coal and iron and trading chiefly with Norway, the Baltic and Canada, you can imagine how busy this house was. And William of course had a fantastic imagination and one of the, the poems that most children learnt at school here was the Up the Airy Mountain, which when we listen closely to it, it's actually really quite a dark poem. And Neve is going to say that for us. Up the Airy Mountain, down the rushy glen, we daren't go a hunting for fear of little men. We folk, good folk, trooping all together, green jacket, red cap, and white owl's feather. Down along the rocky shore, some make their homes. They live on crispy pancakes of yellow tide foam. Some in the reeds of the black mountain lake, with frogs for their watchdogs all night awake. So the Malky here was also witness to the really sad history of our chapter of emigration all down through the, the centuries. And thousands of emigrants would have left from here. But we do have one eyewitness account of the departure of the Mayflower by Marianne Allingham in July 1827. And she wrote, The departing of friends who perhaps will never meet again is a melancholy sight. The bitter yet repressed sobs of one, the loud and wild screams of another, fall on the heart with a sensation not to be described. Some musicians began to play the touching air of Au Lang Syne with an effect felt by every heart and never to be forgotten by mine. That's very poignant, Olive. And I suppose 20 years later, we come to famine times and there was a story I heard Anthony Begley mention of famine piracy just uh, along the estuary here when a, a boat was, was boarded on Christmas Eve in 1846 by some local people who were starving and the thing was that during the famine when people starved in this area there was a lot of food and salmon particularly shipped out of the Mal Quay here which was really terrible but on Christmas Eve in 1846 uh, local people boarded a schooner that was bound for Liverpool and they took uh, a large quantity of bacon and lard off uh, off here. And, you know, sadly, these people were, were prosecuted for their crime after this. And you think of how hard it must have been at the time for, for those poor people living uh, on the land at the time. One of the best landmarks of Ballyshannon is this Inish Seymour Island we yeah. see out here. It was also known as Fish Island or Dog Island. 
And of course, the myth is that a Met Mediterranean chief named Partholin landed here with his followers 5,000 years ago. And do you know that legend as how it got its name, Barry? Uh, yes, I heard about that legend. All right, Olive. Um, <clears throat> Partholon, I, I believe, killed their favourite wolfhound, Samer, uh, one day when he came back hearing about his wife's infidelity. So, Well, that's a story anyway. Um, we do know the historical records that the island was definitely used as a stronghold by Irish chieftains, including the O'Donnells. And much later then, in the 12th and 13th century, Cistercian monks actually lived on it. And you see that house you can see now? That was only constructed in the mid-1800s by the Erne Fishing Company because it was part of that whole lucrative Erne salmon and eel fisheries industry that we talked about earlier. Yes, and it's the real heart of the story of Ballyshannon's oldest town and Partholon landing here 5,000 yeah, years ago. Samer, and Samer, the, the famous wolfhound, has gone down in history yes, for all time. Yeah. So there's some of the stories on our journey from the centre of Ballyshannon down to the Malachy. We've had uh, a nice journey. I hope, I hope you enjoyed it. And, uh, you know, we're really looking forward to some positive improvements along the Mal over the coming months through the Historic Towns Initiative. And we look forward to perhaps next Heritage Week in 2022 that we can invite you back in person to Ballyshannon uh, to enjoy another Heritage Week event and we'll see some very positive and significant changes along the mall. So thank you very much for listening in. Olive, thanks very much. I enjoyed it. Did you have a good and, time? And indeed, thank you all for, for watching, and I hope you have enjoyed it. No more unpleasant evenings will saunter down the mall. When the trout is rising to the fly, the salmon to the fall. The boat comes straining on her net and heavily she creeps. Cast off, cast off, she feels the oars and to her berth she sweeps.